did I order? Mmm. Okay then. Whatever it is, they sure didn't pat it very well. Alright, let's see. Good luck. What? The laptop. I don't think I've ordered a laptop recently. Whatever. Free laptop, maybe. Whatever. Let's see what it is. Oh, sh If you've been into computers for a while, you're probably familiar with the name AMD FX. If you've been in computers for too long of a while, you may also know of this AMD FX. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about this one. AMD's much maligned successor to the K10-based Phenom chips, intended competitor to Intel Sandy Bridge chips, and subject of many heated arguments over what a core is. And if you haven't been around, let's just say performance equals no, power consumption equals very yes. And yes, I can hear the apologists foaming at the mouth already. All I can say is, sorry not sorry. Before we really get started, let me give a quick refresher on why FX is so controversial. Arriving in 2011, the FX series was the flagship of AMD's flotilla of brand new bulldozer ships, uh, I mean, uh, chips. These brought up to eight cores to the desktop for the very first time promising to fix AMD's deficit in multi-threaded applications in the face of Intel's return to their hyper-threading technology. However, they implemented these cores in a quite different way. Unless you're looking to start an argument, it's really best to describe bulldozer chips as having modules rather than cores. I say this since one module is made up of two discrete integer cores sharing a single floating point unit. So is this one core, or is this one core. I'm not here to tell you what to believe, though my opinion on the matter is probably going to be clear throughout the video. But either way, performance was not good. Single thread performance is well behind Sandy Bridge, and sometimes even K10, and multi thread performance is somewhere in between Intel's four and eight threaded quad cores when looking at what at least AMD called an eight core bulldozer chip. There's a lot more nuance and discussion to be had here but that's not the point of this video. The point of the video is that the FX series is supposedly exclusive to desktop. For laptops, you're looking at AMD's range of APUs, which generally consist of cut down arrays of the same bulldozer family modules, but with the inclusion of onboard GPUs. These are generally labeled as the A series, where the A is followed by some number in a range from four to 12. So in that case, how the hell did this happen? Unfortunately for you, it's too early in the video for me to explain. You gotta listen to me ramble about the laptop it's contained in first. This is a Toshiba Satellite E45DW, a 2-in-1, or convertible, laptop from 2015. Contrary to my silly skit in the intro, I actually got this thing from the local thrift store for more money than I ever expected to spend on a thrift store laptop. However, it's in what I'll call nearly good shape. Not many scratches on it, the battery has like 80% life left, the factory stickers are even all still here and in great shape. There's just one problem. Yeah, that's probably why it ended up in the thrift store. But luckily, it's just the glass and the screen underneath works just fine. Given it's a machine from late 2015, it of course came with the brand new at the time Windows 10. And given it's a budget conscious machine from late 2015, they had no shame in putting Windows 10 on a 5400 RPM hard drive. And you can tell, 
it's a 5400 RPM hard drive. They also cut costs on the screen. It's everybody's favorite low cost resolution, 1366 by 768. And again in 2015, they had no shame in advertising that as HD. It's not wrong, of course, but definitely eye roll worthy. But hey, if this is what it takes to get FX performance at a low price point, then maybe it was worth the compromise? Uh, talking about that, eventually we find our way into Windows, as well as finding our FX 8800P CPU. This comes with two excavator modules, where excavator is the third incremental upgrade to the original bulldozer design. Long story short, this means it's roughly 50% faster per clock than bulldozer itself, and with much lower power consumption too. Here, these modules run at a base clock of 2.1 gigahertz and boost up to 3.4. The TDP can sit anywhere from 12 to 35 watts, depending on OEM configuration. Here, it's configured for 15 watts. Moving on to the other components, we also find 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM and a Radeon R7 GPU with specs best compared to the Radeon HD 7750. By 2015 standards, this should have been a fairly potent machine, especially at its $560 price tag. However, now may be a good time to mention an important fact. The FX chips never actually got excavator cores. The series only got the initial bulldozer release and a second gen refresh with pile driver. After that, AMD saw the writing on the wall and focused on the APUs. As for what that means for this laptop, allow me to reintroduce you to the FX 8800P APU. It's a part of the mobile lineup in AMD's Carrizo family of APUs, alongside the A8-8600P and A10-8700P. Yup, AMD just slapped the FX name on the top performing mobile APU of the generation. No real direct relation to the real FX chips, other than the lineage of the CPU cores inside. They also did this for the preceding Kaveri APUs and the succeeding Bristol Ridge. Now, that probably answers any questions you had about how the hell they fit an inferno of a CPU in there, but may bring up other questions like, why did I not know AMD did this? Now, I can't answer that one. But what I can answer for you is how it performs in games and benchmarks. Let's get to that.
things don't look too good for this APU. At least not for the CPU side of the equation. Getting outperformed in Cinebench by a dual core chip four years older than itself is not a good look. Neither is the show of severe CPU bottleneck in Halo Infinite. This all feels a bit unfair to the GPU, so why don't we give that one last shot at a fair showing? And compare that to a contemporary Intel iGPU? Really? Yeah, really. But for once, this isn't actually AMD's fault. Let's take a look at a result from this exact chip, but on a desktop board. Okay, that's more like what I expected. Right in line with a discrete HD7750. So what's the problem here? Cheap ass OEMs. Remember what I said about the TDP being adjustable for this chip? How it could go up to 35 watts, but this machine is set for only 15? Yeah, Toshiba adjusted that right down, just so that they could cheap out on the cooling and the power delivery. The GPU here is supposed to be able to do 800 megahertz, but at this TDP limit, it's lucky if it reaches 600 under load. And the cost reduced fun doesn't even stop there. In this machine, the APU is also saddled with single channel RAM. I don't think I have to go over how that destroys performance. Plenty of other people have already gone over that. But I have been told that single channel is the norm for these Carrizo laptops, with only a couple making use of dual channel. It should be no surprise that by 2015, AMD chips had been relegated to the budget side of the market. The performance just wasn't there for anything nicer. But the problem with budget machines is that they have nearly every corner cut in the name of low price. Slow storage, bad memory configurations, cheap screens, bad Wi-Fi adapters, and so on. This all combines to make a poor performance even worse and leading people at the time to say that there's no reason to buy an AMD laptop. And honestly, I can't say that they were wrong. The damage done here really cannot be overstated, as it has outlasted the era of the chips that caused it. OEMs were not in a hurry bringing AMD back into the rest of their lineups. As of writing this, it has only somewhat recently become possible to even find a premium grade Ryzen laptop. Some may blame it on underhanded dealings from Intel, and there may or may not be some truth to that. But either way, it's a situation that I believe AMD would not have found itself in if it had not run over its own foot with a bulldozer. Thanks for watching. As per usual, I put way more time into this video than any sane person should have, so I really would appreciate it if you liked, subscribed, or any of that other stuff you've heard a thousand times. If you're into old computers, older than this one generally, take a look at joining the Pixel Talk Discord server, link in the description. With all that said and done, see you next time.